Hi everyone, welcome to Friday. I did my second, my second West End review in 14 months last night. Went to the London Palladium to see Lee Mead live in concert celebrate his 40th birthday. It's quite it was quite different to the ABBA night I went to a couple of weeks beforehand because I don't know the rules seem to be carried out a lot stricter um, than the ABBA thing at the Shaftesbury Theatre, the ABBA tribute, ABBA mania that we went to. Um, at ABBA mania, they laid the rules down. It will, mind you, it was a it was a very rainy and cold evening, so that might have had something to do with it. Last night was very warm, very balmy. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. There was a lot of people in the West End last night. But the demographic of the audience at Lee Mead was very much, I think, probably, I think it was much more similar to our amateur theatre audience. The ABBA mania seemed to be, I don't know, perhaps it's the musical bunch. Perhaps it was a lot more energy, young people there um, whereas last night was a lot the the age group was a lot older very much like the, the the Michael Ball Michael Crawford kind of fan base if you like Lee Mead attracts um, and it was it was a good concert it was a good concert but um, everyone had their face masks on throughout no one ripped them off no one was up on their feet dancing about but having said that Lee Mead is not kind of a natural kind of front man that, that warms the others up you know warms everyone up and, and he, he's very good at what he does uh, performing on the stage but the banter in between is a bit different I don't know it's it's he has special guests okay I mean People like, he had Joe Pasquale warming up for him, a friend of his, who he rang up the week before, Joe, Joe tells us, and he came on for 10 or 15 minutes before the show and did, um, did a very, very funny warm-up, Joe Pasquale. It was brilliant. But Lee Mead needed that. He needed the audience to warm up. And he had Kerry Ellis on in the first half. Who else did he have on in the first half? Oh, we had Marisha Wallace on. My goodness. She came on in the second half as well to sing a duet with him. And um, she was excellent. Absolutely excellent. She's about to star in Hairspray with Michael Ball, funnily enough, playing Motormouth Mabel. And she's a real powerhouse. She's a real powerhouse performer. Fantastic performer. But yeah, there we go. So it's very interesting. Kerry Ellis... Kerry Ellis um, did a Queen song, Can Anybody Find Me Someone to Love? Um, it's very, very, very good. And um, obviously that reflects a lot of her relationship with Brian May from Queen. She does a lot of concerts with him. And, you know, lo and behold, um, brilliant back 10-piece back in band behind Lee Mead last night. There was fantastic. But as I say, all those special guests and support acts... Lee kind of needed on there because it was his um it's his manner to let the performing do the work rather than and there's a lot of ballads in his in his song list um and a lot of songs that he's chosen like his parents wedding song apparently the beach boys god and he knows he did in a very slow version and he did that with a few songs last night. He slowed them right down and did versions that were much slower than... So, it was very good. It was very, very good. And he, he reminds me of Michael Ball quite a lot, actually. Um, Michael Ball has got an exceptional voice. But Lee Mead's voice is very good. Very, very good. And um, funnily enough, the connection between those two is they both played Caractacus Potts, of course. And the London Palladium, where we went last night, is where Michael Ball starred as Caractacus Potts in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And Lee Mead did the tour with Carrie Hope Fletcher, who played the girl Jemima, incidentally, when she set out on her theatre career, when she first started out. Just a little bit of trivia there. 
and um, Lee Mead, he sang Hushabai Mountain, very much sounded like the Michael Ball version, very much like that. Because um, I saw Gary Walmot do it, I saw 21 times I went to the Palladium to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, because my son played Jeremy. Um, and um, I used to get cheap tickets in the evening. The box office got to know me and they used to give me a cheap front circle, single seat, 10 quid. Those were the days, eh? <laughs> But yeah, very interesting, and um, I don't know, get back to where, getting back to, it seems that, I, I really hope that Monday, when we get this announcement on the 14th, a week before the 21st, or what's going to be happening on the 21st, again, let us know a week early, I hope Monday they don't put it back. The rumours are that they might try and put it back, but I don't know, we, you never know, it might not get put back, but theatre passports, venues that take audiences, um, things like that might get might might require negative tests and that kind of thing on, on entry. But who cares? Let's just get open. But it is gonna be the start at the beginning of the the, the end. <laughs> no, not the beginning of the end. It's not the end at all, is it? It's we're gonna restart. And that's gonna be where the real work's gonna be to get our audiences back giving them the public confidence and it's that's what it's all about um I, I found myself deliberately thinking about trying to shake off the britishness of looking around on the train up you know who's not got their mask on blah 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 i know some people don't wear their masks because they hate it and to the hell with it i know if you're exempt you're not you don't have to wear a mask i'm not talking about those people i'm talking about the people who can wear a mask and decide not to because they just two fingers up to the establishment kind of thing well those people are going to exist whatever happens we're not going to get rid of those people this pandemic has just made us notice those people more in society I think um, we're going to look around us it's made us look around and recognize those people for what they represent if you like but you know, we've just got to get, we've just got to ignore them and get back to it. And it's not going to be easy, but we've got to do it because there's no way back otherwise. We've got to do it. We've got to get back. Guys, we've got to get back. As the Beatles famously sang, get back. Yeah, so anyway, let's see what happens. So we'll let. We let Cummings, Hancock and Gove squabble about who said what and Johnson, who said what and let them get on with it and who's given their mates PPE contracts and made millions out of it. It will go on all the time because that's politics and that's what happens in politics, allegedly. But um, just we won't concern ourselves with all of that. We just need to concern ourselves with getting theatres back. I know Andrew Lloyd Webber's gone on record as saying he'll be prepared to go to get arrested because he's going to open his theatres on the 21st, whatever, come hell or high water. <laughs> and Cinderella will be opening a few days after that or in July, whenever it's going to open. Um, but we'll see, won't we? We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, I hope that is the case. And good for Andrew Lloyd Webber to make a stand like that perhaps he will sway the government into saying all right we'll let theatres open again but only if you do this who cares let's just get full capacity back and social distancing because that is the start of the next chapter getting social distancing officially eradicated and then we can start to get the public confidence back while social distancing is in place public confidence is going to be really hard to get back because people will be looking around we just need everyone to take their masks off we all need to get back to where we once were I should play the Beatles now shouldn't I but I'm probably not allowed to do it on this YouTube channel yeah so there we go okay stay safe stay well have a fantastic weekend weather's hot isn't it <laughs> down south it is anyway um, oh by the way um, Boris Johnson and that will be announcing England's regulations. Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland have their own sets, following very closely in the 
English guidelines and the UK government's guidelines, but Boris Johnson will be announcing England's regulations. I just have to stipulate that. Stay safe, stay well. See you later. Bye.